Now the poor old 1550, the steering arm down in here gave up the ghost where the bolt goes through. I've already got a new one coming, but gotta get her all apart. So I will be doing that. Uh, I'm gonna take the steering box up and come from that way. Um, a person can drop the front axle down and take it off that way. But to me, that just seems like more work. You got an unstable tractor that could tip. So just as easy to take some sheet metal off, pull the radiator and pull that box out. Then I can put new seals on it. It was seeping a little bit too. So get her done up right. So let's get to work. Well, I made pretty good progress. It didn't take long. Before I uh, disconnect the steering box, I'm gonna disconnect the tie rod ends from the arm there because that'll help keep things from wiggling around and I think be a little easier to work. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised using a nail as a as a cotter pin for the nut here. Nice. Well, before it came here, this tractor lived a rough life as a loader tractor at the foundry in town where they pretty much used it as a battering ram. And now I'm trying to get the, out the ever classic nail as a cotter pin. There. I should probably save that. It didn't break, so you know, it's probably still good. Let's see if I can't zip that baby off. Well, that was easy enough. Pickle fork, for those aren't familiar with one, just stick it in there. And pop, out she comes. I'll have to straighten the wheels out to get it all the way out. But I might as well get that other nut. I guess I'll turn them the other way. That'll make that more accessible from the top. Okay, now we can come in. Get that baby right there. At least it's got a real cutter pin, not a nail. Well, it wasn't that long ago I did this on Allen 1650, so I guess it's all fresh in my head. Got my bucket underneath. Hopefully it'll catch the oil where I've got it at. It's always a mess. I suppose I could use my little pump thing to mace.
Come on. See if this bolt was loose. Nope. Let's see if the cordless impact will get it off from there. It did. I'd say it wasn't super tight. I might take someone's suggestion about putting some Loctite on those threads. I got the nut off the bolt that clamps it on. Just gotta drive that through. The thing's jumped on the splines, and so the bolt ain't lined up with the notch, which is going to make it go really hard. Well, I figured out what to do to keep that from moving. I just dropped the tie rod back in, drove the bolt out. I would say that was the problem. Like I was saying earlier, this tractor lived a rough life being a loader tractor at a foundry. So something tells me that was already cracked. Well, let's get that shaft out of there. Fortunately, the splines look good on the shaft. There's where the bolt normally goes through. And when it split, it jumped some teeth, and so the bolt wasn't quite in there, and that's why it was driving out so hard. Well, that needle bearing seems to be in sh good shape. The needles ain't leaning or anything. Oh, my battery's getting low on my treble light. But let's we'll get all that cleaned up before it goes back together. This will turn off the cycle light. Here's how she. I would say it would have been broke for a while. It's pretty dirty up here towards the top. It wasn't. A There wasn't much holding it. I'm just glad it didn't go going down the road or something like that. But I got a new one coming. That should be here next week. Time to clean parts. I had some questions about swapping axles in another video. And so I thought since this is kind of torn down here, it'd be a good time to address that. Um, the main bolt pattern up here in front. 
that there. Okay. Um, these six bolts was largely unchanged from the uh, well, the Fleet Line tractors, the Super 77 or 7788s, the Supers, and the three digits. Um, so you could take a wide front off a Super 88 and bolt onto here. Uh, if you were thinking uh, about putting power steering in, I'm not sure if there's room in a Super frame. I know there isn't a three digit frame for the uh, power steering cylinder that goes up here, but they didn't have an, any kind of anchor to anchor it to until 56. So that's something to watch out for. But if you're going to, Say I wanted to convert this 1550 to a narrow front. Well, I just uh, pull it, drop this axle out and uh, the narrow front would bolt onto these six bolts. Of course, it'd be kind of weird, a utility with a narrow front. So if I was gonna swap this, I'd take this off. Of course, on a 15, this axle could uh, bolt onto a 1750, 1850. The front part would bolt up no problem. The back here, the tub's narrower on a 15 and a 16, so this is different. And then an 1850 diesel with the Perkins engine, the bottom of the tub's a little wider there, and so they had a different bracket for that one as well. Um, the rest of the axle is the same. Uh, if it was a row crop axle, even with this underslung, uh, Oliver called it the adjustable short wheelbase axle. And the reason this one is a short wheelbase a utility axle is the spindles right here are shorter to make a, or level the tractor back out from the shorter rear wheels, part of the utility package. So I could bolt this onto an 1850, but boy, she would nose down in the front without some big tires on it, which might be kind of cool. Uh, give someone some thoughts out there of stuff to do. But if I wanted to drop this axle off and put a regular wide front on, I could uh, take out the six bolts and well, only four on a utility, or this, uh, on, short wheelbase axle and then the back and then there would be six bolts when I go back in I believe and then there's just see them back there under the engine but the pad is underneath Let's see if we can't get a view of that there's a three bolt pad there for the back of the yoke that's in all the castings that's where your wide front uh, yoke would bolt to. So then it comes down to whether or not you have to pull the radiator off. And that kind of comes down to what style of uh, steering arm you've got here. If it's one with a bolt going through, basically if you're taking off the same style it's going back on, you don't have to pull the radiator and stuff. You can just pull the bolt out of the uh, steering arm to loosen it up. And then the shaft will stay with the steering box up top and as you lower the axle down away from the frame it should all slide off and then you just slide your new one back on make sure it's centered up good so your steering is equal left and right later on they changed the design it was either late 50 series or early 55 series but the 18 Oop, forgot my light the purple 1850 over here actually has the later style axle. It must have been uh, swapped out at some point or something because uh, this is a very early 1850. But they changed. They improved the design. We're looking underneath. You can see the six bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Same pattern as over on that 1550. And then the yoke goes into the three bolts back here. But on later axles, they had this nut on the bottom and the uh, steering arm here has tapered splines on it the nut pushes on a sleeve that pushes on that and then the, the shaft has the tapered splines so you can basically take the slop out of this just by tightening this nut forces the uh, steering arm farther onto the shaft the tapers locked to, tapered splines locked together and boom she's tight again so much better design splines all the way around but the shaft is different because of the tapered splines and the arm is different because of the tapered splines. So if I was to put this one on the 1550, there's no reason I couldn't. I would have to take the box off the top because the shaft would have to stay with this to be compatible with the, uh, that tractor. It'll go into that box that's on the 1550. 
but it won't stay with this. So that's the, if this was an earlier axle with a clamp on arm, then I could just take the bolt out down here that comes out through there to loosen that up, then take the bolts off and lift the tractor up away from the axle. That would all slide down. Then I could just slide the next axle back up. If I was going to narrow front, that shaft is built right into the pedestal and you just, you gotta take the uh, bolt out and the stuff out of the top of the steering box in order to do it right. So you will have to take the radiator out to get to that. Um, nothing terribly complicated, just a little more time consuming. But um, that's about the gist of it. I've seen 1650s with 88 axles on them. Uh, I will say the 1950, they moved a couple of the holes. So four of them match up and two of them do not. And it's not off by much. You can drill the hole out and, uh, and get the bolts in with a, just a little bit of work. That's what some guys do with pulling tractors on their 1950s to get a smaller front pedestal on there to keep the weight down. Get a pedestal from a 77 or even a 66 and bolt it up in there. And uh, you can either just use the four bolts if you want or just ream them holes out a little bit so you can get the extra two in and, and you're good. So swapping them out ain't too bad. They stayed pretty consistent with the bolt pattern. Other than like I say, the 1950. I'm not sure on the 2050s, 2150s, if they're quite the, if they have that moved bolt or not. I'm sure it saved all of our money because one uh, tooling in the workshop could do all the machining as far as drilling and tapping, creating the face. They didn't have to have a different setup for each model of tractor, mostly. <laughs> Obviously that 1950 throws a kink into that. So that's the, the basics of swapping out an axle. Something I wanted to show on this 1550 that I thought kind of neat little history on it. Um, the hood that was on it, this poor tractor had run the lock. lock. <laughs> this poor tractor had a rough life. Here's the hole that was on it. Or here's the hood that was on the 1550. Notice the exhaust hole had been cut out. The reason for that is the early utility 1550s had an underhood muffler, a larger version of what the 8877s and some of them used, the Fleetline tractors. And I was fortunate enough to get a muffler before they were discontinued, but I didn't put it on until a year or two ago. And then it's just a straight pipe that comes out. So it looks like a straight pipe, but it's actually a muffler. And then of course they took a special hood because the hole was in a different spot. And that one was all bent up and cobbled up. And I was at Farmersville Equipment in Pennsylvania during a sh tractor show and, uh, and um, went through his inventory and found this hood. Brand new old stock, 1550 utility hood. Checked the part number on it. And then I didn't even notice this at first, but at some point in its history, I'm getting the glare. I'll flip that over. But it says from Dave Perrine Implement, Marshall, Michigan, which is about 25 or so miles from here, maybe 30. Uh, then they shipped it back to White Farm Equipment in Columbus, Ohio, which was a branch warehouse. Who knows what, why they did that, whether they ordered the wrong hood or a customer changed their mind or what. I doubt it was for this tractor. This tractor came from the opposite direction of them, but who knows? And then at some point, White shipped it back out to Weitzel Brothers in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And then somehow or another Farmersville, whether well, auction or what, but they ended up with it in their vast inventory of stuff. Unfortunately, they are not open anymore. I had an auction here recently. So I'm glad I got this one I did. It shined up nice. Being able to find a, a little dusty right now. Find the right hood for that. Uh, I, I jumped on it. So slowly but surely, I'm getting this tractor back up to snuff. Doesn't hurt so bad when you only do it. A little here, a little there. Because honestly, this tractor probably should have just been parted out. <laughs>
That's it for this episode. Appreciate everybody watching. We'll see you in the next one.